Hello and welcome to another Comedian's Interview for my blog and podcast, A Rich Comic Life. My name is Richard Gill and my blog describes my experiences of watching over 1,000 comedians and counting over the last 48 years. I'm delighted to welcome my guest today. It's Mr. Mark Nicholas. Yay! Yay! Hello, mate. Hi, are you all right? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah, no, just getting there, getting there. Each really good time. to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, mate. Really good. Good man. Well, uh, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, it's going to be an interview about your comedy career, and it's going to last about 45 minutes to an hour. And I'd like to kick off by asking, how did you become a comedian in the first place? Okay, well, to be honest, this is a bit more of a complex story than most because <laughs> so I'll start from where so in about 2016 my father passed away and oh, of, of cancer and he was always a big fan of comedy growing up and he brought me up on certain like comedians and things like that and but I didn't deal with it very well so I dealt with it by literally going traveling right Nice. And I went travelling to Vietnam in about 2017. Right, just got out, teach English, experience it. Yeah. But out in Vietnam, in Saigon, there was an expat comedy group. Right. And I, like, I was just like, oh wow, this is great. Um, it was mainly like improv and telling jokes and things like that. And I was like, yeah, no, I'll give it a go. And it was, it was a mixture between American English, some Vietnamese as well. They've got a wicked sense of humour. <laughs> and so I took part in this course and and it led to the showcase where I was performing um, at this bar called Yoko, named after Yoko Ono. And Brilliant. There's about 70 odd people and I was so nervous. My, so my first gig was like June 2017, technically. And I was so nervous. I had this awful stage fright, right? Oh, and the MC was absolutely brilliant. He said to me, Mark, do you know what? I will whisper your own jokes in your ear, like, just so you could do it. Like, oh, he was fantastic. Very I mean, he didn't have to in the end. I eventually got over it. And it was such a buzz afterwards. I was so nervous, so shaken up by the adrenaline. It was only a five minute set, but even five so. Minutes, five minutes when you're first starting comedy, is a long time. Any comedian will tell you when you first start five minutes material, no one thinks, no one imagines it doesn't sound that long, but when you're up on stage, it's like a lifetime. It really is. So I did that. Then when I went back home, I was like, I'm going to get into it. But I kept putting it off. And then I waited another year, did a comedy course in London did sorry two comedy courses in London. I did one. Uh, my tutor was Tams and Kelly, and I did that. My first gig that was at the Comedy Pub, and yeah. actually, it's funny enough where I'm performing. Well, to where we're recording tonight, um, I'm actually performing at the Comedy Pub this evening. So that's quite a nice little loop. How amazing know, is that? <laughs> yeah, oh, there is so. But that was my first gig in London, in the UK. And then right. I did um, another comedy course, this Ultra Comedies, where they raised money with cancer research. And, and like Mike Gunn was my tutor then as well. So I had yeah, two oh, brilliant... what a comedian he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had two absolutely amazing tutors. And that yeah. showcase was at the back, at Backyard. And, and then since then, I thought, well, do you know what? I'm going to... Go for it. And I just did. I just went for it. And I suddenly got over these nerves. It took me time. Good but man. here I am, four years later, still surviving. So. That's fantastic. I, I I tell all the comedians um, this this infamous story. I, I once had a go myself at stand-up comedy. And it was for a promoter years ago. Uh, and it was for a gong show, which couldn't be worse and it was for, it was for old people and uh i i uh, had this script my my home city's carlisle and uh i i've spent half my life down in london but but yeah. i passed i passed my driving test in carlisle and I, I was never a very good driver so i wrote this script out about all my 
crashing cars in Carlisle. Yeah. And the and the promoter loved it. And I walked out onto the uh stage and, and he said, right, he said, you've got three minutes. So I walked out. And um uh um the first thing I said was, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. People think I look like Eddie the Eagle Edwards, the ski jumper, but I can't see the resemblance myself. And of course, I'm his double. And one bloke at the back just went, fuck off, jump me off. And that was it. Wow, <laughs> that is. And the promoter said, I'm another guy. I said, I said, I'd. I don't, I don't know. Never said. I mean, the fact that your first gig was a gong show. You're brave and mad the most, to be honest. That is gong shows are terrifying. Brutal. They are yeah, all, just awful. Brutal. Um, so I've, 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 I thought my um, uh, comeuppance, if you like, is sitting in the audience watching you all and admiring what you what you all do, and and that's how the blog and the podcast and everything started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you like to talk about on stage yourself? Have you got any specific themes or anything like that? Um, so, like, I like to initially sort of talk about my autism and mm. how that affects me. And the more I've talked about it, the more I want to go into stories about it, about my yeah. experiences, about how I've always been socially awkward, how I've always, you know, said the wrong things, no filter. So actually comedy is quite a nice thing for me because <laughs> it gives you the per- it gives you the perfect platform. And like of course. <laughs> it does. It's like Joe Wells has this wonderful bit, because he's autistic as well, and he has this wonderful bit. He goes, you know, it goes, oh, you can't be autistic because you're talking about that because you're doing stand up comedy. Uh, I talk about my particular interest for an extensive length of time without any right of reply. It's the perfect thing for autism. Like, it's it, it's, <laughs> that, it's so actually, it's like when people go, oh, you're autistic, are you sure? I said, like, well, yeah, it, it's, it, it fits perfectly. So I talk about that. I oh, try yeah. to delve into topical subjects, but more throwaway jokes, but it's all about my personal experiences and, and, oh. and growing up with, um, aut- you know, the aut- with autism. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 of course, yeah. Um, I, I've i seen you at the Laughing Horse in Brighton, and I've, oh, seen, yes. and I've seen you at Sofa So Funny, uh, which uh, was a lovely surprise to have you on the guest bill. These, these were both in 2022, Hmm. And I was amazed at your originality and your uniqueness and your extreme wit. It was so funny. The, the, way, that, uh, the way that you banter with an audience is extraordinary. You came up to me and I can't, I can't remember what you said, but it was like... Oh, God, oh, that's what it is. <laughs> but I, I, I tell, I tell that story on stage, so then I do that yeah. to someone else. Because actually, come and see me, because this yeah, is yeah, yeah. This is yeah. When, when I do that to someone else, that particular part of my set, yeah. Um, I after the first time I did, I asked someone what they did for a living, and they said there was a comedy reviewer, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> I was like, and they, uh, they, they didn't quite give. They only gave me three stars, you know. Wow. <laughs> they, that's they, just they, so they, unfair. They, 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 um, they, 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 they did all kinds of things. If they had done, they would have given me five stars. The, the uh, question that leads on from all that is yeah. can you tell me, tell me about your writing process for a routine or a show? So, a lot of it is based on um, what happens to me. If I've, if I, if I've been out, one night or if I've been at a gig yeah and something happens to me that's quite amusing um <laughs> I will write that as a sort of anecdote um because whatever it's, it's weird whatever I, I'm, I'm doing this bit now where I'm getting a bit of research about about you know what people perceive autism to be and um, and I've asked them and literally someone said a healthcare worker who'd been in the profession for eight years Right. I asked them what they thought autism was. They just said numbers. They literally wow. said numbers. Wow. I was just a bit like, any particular numbers? You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was just like, it was bizarre. So then, then I write that into a bit and then I tried it out last night. And I did, I did it last night at uh, a gig I was emceeing. And uh, yeah, people were in hysterics about that. And it was just like, I've had, I, I, I literally, I, 
what I'm doing more now is crowd work. And from the crowd work, I try and source my jokes from there. Yeah. Or, if it's, or if there's a topical thing that happens in the news, I just make a quick note, I put a tweet out or something like that. And, yeah, so the writing process like that, like I've got the my main body of material that I sort of wrote at the beginning. And then what I do, I tweak it, edit it, polish yeah. it up a bit. Like there's jokes I've had like for years, but most of my materials, I, I like to try and freshen it up or tighten it up or make it um, make it a bit smoother and, and then things like that. So, but sometimes an idea will pop into my head. Like the worst thing is sometimes 3 a.m. I'll have an idea, I'll wake up, I'll forget to write it down, and then the next morning I'll be like, oh shit, what was what was the joke? <laughs> So my writing process, <laughs> if, I, if I try to sit down and plan some writing, I can't do it. I get like writer's block. It's it's when I'm just sitting doing nothing, suddenly ideas pop into my head. Or like, it, I have a really, really straight, I don't have a structured writing process as maybe people would expect me to do. Because I do have rules to my comedy. Like I do have the rule of three things I try and use and, yeah, you know uh, the throwaway jokes, defy expectations, things like that. You know, different methods I've learned through uh, over the years. So I do have a, I do have joke structures that I follow. But more yeah. often than not, it'll be oh, here's a wacky idea, or I don't know the audience interaction. Because this is the thing when you're going out gigging most nights, you have some very weird experiences, and <laughs> and you just include it in your. It's it's like being a comedian. It's just there's something different that happens every day. I'm sure a gig I go to tonight, there'll be something different and bizarre. Yeah. But that's the beauty of comedy. Um, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's, that, that's wonderful. The the um the, the most creative thing I ever did, other than this blog, was write a play, and it's about uh, uh it's about my experiences of not getting a job. Uh, and it's called it's called the applicant. I'm 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 employed now. I, I I've, I've worked in the civil service. I've worked in a school. Yeah. And I currently work in the council. But it's about the play is about uh, a character who never gets a job and he's never had an interview. And it was all monologue interview monologue interview. That's how it was structured. And when I ran out after writing this thing and perform and rehearsing it for 10 months, the first of three nights we put on, I ran out and I had this great long monologue and I forgot it. <laughs> oh, no. And I was like a rabbit in headlights. How long did it take you to write it? And I thought, what's the, oh, no, just swallow me up now. And, and, and that's why I've got, that's a reason why I've got a lot of admiration for comedians to walk out and just nail the audience. Because if you're good like you are, you just say, I, I can imagine you just think, right, I'm going to make this audience laugh come hell or high water. Would you agree with yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, but, the, you know, there'll be, well, there'll be nights where the audience will be really not responded or yeah. there'll be there'll be set like i'm going to try tonight i'm going to try a load of new material out and some of it might not land. actually a lot of it probably won't land but then what mm. i do i have you know like it's like a rabbit out of the hat i go to my safe jokes i go right i'll pepper it with material that i know works yeah yeah um, and often it's the writing process so i'll develop a new set by slowly taking out the old ones. I know comics who could just go right in his set yeah. and just go out there and try it all and die on their ass and be okay with that. I can't do that. No. Uh, I, I, I'll die on my ass, but just a little bit. You know, I'll trip <laughs> over a bit. You know, I don't, I don't mind suffering a little bit, but I don't want to <laughs> suffer for 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Goes. Some comics do that and it works for them and that's fine, but... Um, it, but there's this there's this idea that yeah we go out we go out and nail it but sometimes it's not about nailing it sometimes it's about you know you have to fall flat in order yeah. for it to work. That's that's exactly it. I I I say to a lot of comedians, um, it's all about the experience. You must have a bad gig in order to be a better comedian. Do you do you agree with that? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, yeah. or is it? But it's also how you respond to a bad gig. I've had yeah, comics, yeah. newer comics, that have you know, 
had a bad gig and gone, I want to give this up, I want to give this up. I'm like, you don't need to give it up. It's, it happens, believe me. Like, my second ever gig, what, I mean, my technically first time in the open mic, my microphone gave out halfway through oh, no. and I just had to, like, drop the microphone, just go with it. But it was horrible. And it was That's just awesome. like... Oh, no, yeah, it's my second gig as well. And it was in a basement as well. A lot of these, I don't know why. There's so many comedy gigs that are in basement. Just like they want to lock people away and make you suffer. It's like <laughs> it's like they want to recreate, like, what? Like Fritzel was a clown. I don't know. Get them yeah. all down <laughs> in the cellar. It just, always um, reminds me of the Sarah Millican story where she says, if ever I have a bad gig, I wake up the next morning and by 10 o'clock I move on yes. and start again. Yes, and, I uh, follow that rule intently. It's yeah, yeah, a brilliant yeah. rule to follow. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And the and and the other great one is the Ken Dodd gag where he um describes uh what Freud said about laughter and he goes into this really elongated way of laughing and says it starts in your clack and it moves up and then you laugh and everything and he goes on for about 10 minutes and the and the the killer line is mind you ladies and gentlemen freud didn't play glasgow empire on a friday night <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know what it's supposed to be the graveyard for comics yeah Anyway, you said before um, that you emceed, which is wonderful. Do you prefer comparing to doing a solo routine? Well, I think I, I like both on their own merits. I think yeah. what emceeing will do, it will allow me to try stuff out. It will allow me to improve on my crowd work. I'd recommend any comic, regardless of whether you want to go into emceeing or not, does emceeing because yeah. what it allows you to do it allows you to like improvise a bit it allows you because your job as the MC is very different to your job as a solo act um your job as the MC is to maintain the energy levels of the night and maintain the standards so i i went on an MC course actually uh, a couple of years ago and it really helped yeah. me so like, um, who's Gary Michaels? Who man? He's Gary Michaels. Used to oh yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Open mics in London. And one of the things was, if an act dies, your job is to bring the energy up. If an act smashes it, your job is to bring the energy down. <laughs> so it's so your job is to go there and take the hit. And because actually, I mean, I mean yeah, it's. Um, you're, you're, you're the full guy you are the full guy you know, because the thing is the problem is if an act smashes it and then you go and keep them out of applause go for your next act of the evening blah 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 what you've done you've set that other act to a really high bar and you could have had a really established act um, smashing the room and then the person doing their first gig and people are expecting it and they're like oh god so your job is to suck the energy out it's it, it sounds really bizarre, but a good MC will do that. I, I, would, I would love that, I think. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, that's 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 one that's a wonderful answer. Um yeah. uh, how do you cope with any nerves? You mentioned nerves before. How do you cope with any nerves before you go on stage? Do you still get nervous now? Oh, God. I mean, it does depend on the night. If it's a night I've done lots of times, I won't be nervous because yeah. I know the crowd, I know the venue. The, most, the, the the biggest nerves I get is not knowing the venue, not knowing not knowing how it all works. Because every yeah, venue yeah. is slightly different than how you position yourself. If it's a really big gig with lots of, you know, potential consequences to it, then... then I will be like last week I did the comedy store and I was absolutely bricking it. Like I was absolutely bricking it. Congratulations, uh, all, sorry. Congratulations, you did it. Yeah, thank you. Oh no, it was it was such an amazing experience because I did I got through to by via the King Gong thing. And I did five nice. minutes a couple of years ago. And, no, last year, and then this year I've done another five minutes and they want me back. They like me. But it, I just said I need to do a few more open spots to get um, the paid stuff. But they like me. That's what's really important about it. That's like, I did well enough to know to, to keep going. I think the problem I struggled with last week, though, was 
it's a five minute set. And at the moment I'm used to doing extended sets, but actually, you know, where you progress a lot in comedy is those what they call competition fives. So they're the very tight fives and that's how you then jump to the next level. That's when you, that those types of nights go well. That's when you start getting the regular pro gigs, the, you know, the paid spots, the extended spots, the headline spots. But yeah, so it's always important, no matter what level you're at as a comedian, is to have that tight five in case you're asked to do in a, like a huge club and they go, we just want to see how you're doing. We just want to get a feel for you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. they'll give you five minutes. But problem is I have about 20 minutes, 30 minutes at least of material. I could go on for an hour if I wanted to, but I won't. I haven't done my hour yet, actually. I'm <laughs> working my way up to an hour, but I'm pretty sure I could do one an hour if I was asked to. But um, that was really nerve-wracking because I knew there were sort of promoters there and I knew there were very <laughs> important people there. Um, <laughs> so it was just like, be on your A-game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Did you... Um start off uh doing five minutes in pubs and working your way up like a lot of them do is yeah is, yeah i did but i i i know why you asked that question because actually if you go up north the the, the starting point is 10 minutes yeah, um, yeah 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 i know an act up north his first gig was standard 10 minute set yeah yeah and that and that's daunting because the as you say the fives i i never of course realized that if anybody wanted to see your act who had never seen it before or any act who had never seen it before if you've got five minutes ready to go you're away because they can you can they can get a flavor of it and then you and then you work on from there if you've got the material like you say you know it's it's yeah, absolutely uh, fascinating yeah um yeah. i i i would be many a comedian's five minute uh, friend, five minutes set friends because of the laugh. So all the up and coming comics, they always used to say, "Come along, Rich, come along," and I'd go and sit in the front row. And, and that's brilliant. That's that's, that's right, really because really actually, you know, you never know how it's going to go, especially when yeah, you're starting yeah. out. But um, yeah. yeah, it's another, yeah. it's another, it's another reason for the blog. Um, it's not just um, uh, professional top comedians. It's also the up and coming brand new ones that support as well which and, is what what's what i like about your blog yeah, as well because yeah, actually yeah. The, the the top the top comics often will have at one everyone at one stage starts at a basement in the park yeah. so i keep talking about basements but it's like no, it's no, no. most most comic actually yeah. every comic i know the top pro ones will yeah. would have started in a basement somewhere there's so, there's so many uh, famous ones now that uh, I've watched uh, do five minutes. And um, this particular week we're recording the podcast that just announced Peter Kay's new tour, who's probably yeah, one absolutely. of the biggest comedians in Britain. I first <laughs> saw him in a little club in Manchester and he was on the bill of five acts and he was fourth on. And I and I missed the fifth act through laughing. I was laughing so hard at him. And really? I said to my mate, I said, he's going to be a superstar. And I had to go and apologise to Dave Gorman some years later because he was the fifth act. Oh, <laughs> no, Dave Gorman, no. I mean, like, how many times do you see a five-minute act, or an act who does five minutes and goes? Exactly. Yeah. Like, but but genuinely, yeah, from your experiences over 50 years, how yeah, many do yeah. you come across that you go, yeah, they're gonna be it is that's that's another thing. Obviously, there's so many memories in the blog, but also as yeah. well, watching the comedians develop is extraordinary. Um yeah. another another funny story was um recently met Harry Hill and he oh, still wow. is um to this day my favorite opening line to any set. Um, 30 years ago, I first saw him downstairs at the King's Head in Crouch End. Oh, and he, okay, yeah. And he, and he brushed past me and he stood up on, went up onto the stage and went, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really sorry I'm late. I had to have a testicle brought down. And everybody burst out laughing. And then he said, from Derby. <laughs> nice, brilliant. I love and it. Then, and then when I met him, I told him this. He went, thanks, Rich. He said, I still use the routine to this day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> surprise, you'll be surprised. Genius. 
<laughs> anyway, <Not too> <laughs> would you would, would you say we were talking about nerves? Would would you say that as soon as you walk on and pick up the microphone, as soon as you speak into it, do the nerves go? Uh, I mean, again, it depends on the venue. Like, yeah, the comedy yeah. stuff, my nerves are very much still there, but you're in the zone. So it feels like it flashes away so quickly that it's just you don't you don't have time to no. be nervous as you sort of but the nerves are still running through you the adrenaline because what you don't I sorry I, I did a weird gesture there but what you know what you don't notice is the comedian's hand will be shaking like whatever like craziness especially if it's a venue they've not done before yeah yeah and, yeah. Notice that I'll notice the nerves comedians go to in the green room is fascinating because there are some comics that just like to go, yeah, 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 yeah. There are other comics that are just in their zone and just in be like, zone. yeah, no, that's it. I have to, I have to be in my own head, and yeah, then yeah. afterwards they're a bit more relaxed. But yeah, you were uh, fascinating, uh, seeing it. it um, they, uh, I go to always be comedy. Uh, every week nearly and it's fascinating watching the compare there James Gill because before he goes on he sort of like psychs himself up and then he's away and and he's he's so good with a crowd and he's running around and visual and all the rest of it but to watch him psych himself up it's it's his, it's his way of um uh getting ready for it you know to because yeah. because to this day you will not you, the wonderful thing about being live, I think, is that you don't is is that it's of the moment, and you don't know the audience. You're 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 delivering the best that you can do to a complete uh, group of strangers. Yeah, and it's wonderful, obviously, when it hits, and and you can t- and you're very good at doing that. With within a minute, people are either warming to you or laughing at you and 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 you can then go on and say what you like yeah no yeah. So it is and that's why sort of opening jokes are really important that they land yeah. because it can then be very hard to uh pick up from that after like if if you can do it like i i've opened i've done my opening joke and fell flat but then you can build up that energy, but then yeah, it's yeah. about them building yeah. up that energy. So yeah. that's why you're so nervous before you go on because the opening joke needs to hit. It makes yeah. things so much easier because if the opening joke doesn't hit, you have more work to do. Right. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah, the, the more you do it, the more you work work with it. Like, yeah. you know, I always say to a newer act now, I mean, I'm not the expert in this. I, I always get advice from anyone I can um but best advice i've had was you know i mean you're, t- you're as good as your last joke so if that yeah, joke yeah. goes well you should move on to the next one it's fine yeah. it's no one laughs that's okay you just move on to the next joke you don't what you i've seen so many acts and i used to do it go oh that didn't work or that was new oh god and the problem is you dwell on it unless you make a joke about how bad it was then what you're doing is dwelling and the audience don't want to see that. They feed that energy. And so you could either do two things. You can. could either do two yeah. things. Like a brilliant, a, someone so well crafted that is, is Mark Simmons because he has, he writes oh. so many different jokes. Yeah. If a joke doesn't land, he'll be like, all right, okay, well, what have I got next? And Or or he'll jokingly try and explain that joke and it would just, and then that'd be yeah. funny. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll he's, know what to he's do. a master to watch. He, he he really is. I think I th- I think he was the headliner when we were at yeah. Stop So Funny. He was, it was fascinating I, I, watching him. Absolutely brilliant. Like he did because yeah. I run a night and he did that. He headlined that night and it was a smaller room as well. But yeah. he yeah. came in and he was like, "Can I do all new material?" I was like, "Yeah," because I yeah. knew it would all out because I knew yeah. he would do really well. Because he did his new material, some didn't work, but then some he just, you know, yeah. he just kept going, and he just does a list. He just it's phenomenal. He's amazing. He, yeah, he's absolutely amazing. He's been he's been on here as a guest, and he was he was terrific. Um, how do you remember all your routines? Do you write a notebook beforehand for any new sketches, or do you write them on your hand, or do you remember them? 
Well, how do you do it? So I don't write on my hand. I know a lot of comics do. Yeah. So I do have a, I do have a little notepad, but instead of because what I used to do, I used to write out the entire jokes, but then it was yes. just like having to, oh no, too much. So what I do now is write buzzwords. Right. Um, so if I'm doing a joke about, I don't know, social situations or school, or I'll just write school, and then that buzzword, and then it will just expand into the joke. So it's like, it's, it's weird because I sort of almost mind map it in a way. Like, so when I was at school, the way I used to revise, I used, I used to write keywords and yeah. it does trigger thoughts and it does trigger the jokes. I just write buzz. I just write like, but it's weird. If anyone saw my notepad, they all they'd see is Gollum, special schools, queen, prime minister. And it's just like <laughs> the most random list. <laughs> think of. It's the, like I've the, just consumed every the, aspect the, of TV in one thing and just wrote it all down. The, it's like a really bad we didn't start the fire. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 fantastic. Um let's move on. Um I I am very fortunate every year to have my holidays at the uh, at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, I've been very lucky to go since 2005 and I go for a week and I see about 50 shows. I, I map it all out. I Excel yeah. spreadsheets, the lot, and loads of my friends come along. We have the best week. Um, what was your first Edinburgh Fringe like? Uh, what year was it? What did you do? Did you, was That's it good? So, as as a comic or as a punter, uh, uh, either a pun- I start off as a punter. So I went as a punter about five years ago, so twenty seventeen, oh. and I absolutely loved it. I just loved There's everything it. about it, isn't there? Yeah, it's great. It's just I saw so many things, and um, and it was just soaking it all, soaking it all up, and. Yeah, and the thing is as well, because I used to, before I used to perform so much comedy, I used to like go to a lot of comedy nights, but I used to go to the smaller comedy nights or the alternative ones, and I'd meet comics there and chat to them and stuff like that. And those comics that I would chat to in London, I'd see in Edinburgh, and it was so lovely just to try and chat and catch up with them and talk about sort of the process. And yeah. um, my first proper experience is... Uh, as an act was last August, actually I did a two week run and um, took a show up there with another comic, Benny shakes. And yeah, it was called the blue badge bunch. It was a disability game show. Um, oh, it was absolutely, it was, it was actually a kid's show as well. So we were on in the morning and oh, um, that's fantastic. so, so it, it, it was incredible. It was at the Pleasance as well. We had reviewers in. And it's, it it's was, a perfect it, venue, the Pleasance. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Yeah, it's, it's a lovely venue. Places in the world, I would say. S- yeah. Sitting in the courtyard and everybody's around you. It's just the buzz is amazing. Well, and, and you'll see like incredible acts off the telly mm. just sit mm. in on the table. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I saw Reginald D. Hunter, like it was yeah. just like, wow. Or I saw Nish Kumar walking past, and I was yeah. like, and you're just like, because everyone's there for the same reason. All the performers yeah. are there for the same reason. They're all like, okay, well, this is, this is, I'm here to do a run of shows and that's it. When I was there as a uh, performer, it does take it out of you. Like I will say, even the two week run, because you've got to get up and flyer. Um, you jump on open spots as well, just to promote your show. Um, I remember there was this wonderful night we did, me and Benny, called Disabled Cants. And it was run by uh, deaf comic Steve Day, who was like the f- he's like the first deaf comedian. And Steve is wonderful. If you've ever seen Steve, he's absolutely yeah, phenomenal. yeah. I have. He's brilliant. He's, he's absolutely brilliant. fantastic. I wanted to. I love, I love him, and I love Ray Bradshaw as well. Oh, he's, okay, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Steve was Steve was brilliant, and we met Steve out there. And he was running this all disability. Um, yeah. Uh, like com- a compilation show and one of the last days we were there he knew Lost Voice Guy he knew Lee Ridley they were on the, they were on the same books and me and Benny were on a bill with Lost Voice Guy and so he can give you amazing experiences like that Brilliant. and it was just 
it was a, it was wonderful, and he was again really nice guy. And me and Benny, funny enough, interviewed Lost Voice Guy a couple of years ago on Benny's podcast. But oh, fantastic! It, but it was just yeah. So the experience was incredible, and when we got our first review, it was like three weekly. We got four stars. We were just absolutely buzzing, absolutely, absolutely buzzing on cloud nine. Brilliant. Um, so it was absolutely fantastic, and we had guests. What was nice, we had guest comics on. Uh, if you know, some were open micers, some were like proper pros. Like when we had John Robertson on, he was absolutely oh, great. Yeah, he was he was wonderful. What was really great, I actually I got into a little bit of trouble because because basically I went to see John's dark room show and his was yeah. on at the Gilded Balloon, yeah. and I said to him, "Can I exit fly your show because you're there tomorrow? You're at Blue Bad's Bunch tomorrow." And he was like, yeah, that's absolutely fine, not a problem. So he's there signing autographs or whatever, and then after the show, and then I'm exit flying. And the Gilded Balloon manager comes up to me and goes, what's he doing? Uh, and I was like, and I was like oh, oh, John said it was all right. Are you, are you fine? It's your, it's your show at the Gilded Balloon. Oh, no, no, we really don't like that. If you talk, and John saw what's going on straight away, went over and goes, it's fine, okay? It's fine. He can do that. I've said he can do that. And the manager just, Walked off with the tail between her legs. And then, <laughs> That's and then afterwards, You're only helping out another comedian. <laughs> What's brilliant about John, he's very supportive and he's very much like, yeah. give you a helping hand. And But it was, yeah, it was really, I was like, oh shit, I've done really. But he was like, it's absolutely fine, don't worry. I thought I cleared it with him, obviously. <laughs> but Have it you- was just, yeah. <laughs> Have you any plans for the 2023 Fringe? Yeah, so I'm going to, well, hopefully take a split bill up with another autistic comic called Luke Poulton. Oh, uh, he's Luke's very good. Um, uh, he's a TikTok sensation, actually. Like, it's That's weird, but he does get yeah, yeah. some of his I'll, TikTok I'll... people. Yeah. come to his show and he's like I've seen yeah. you on TikTok and he's like what oh my god so um because we're both autistic we thought of uh we thought of like uh like the name names for the show and at the moment what we've got so far this could definitely change by the way well, at the moment we've got two autistic men don't walk into a bar <laughs> that's, 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 that's hopefully time. yeah yeah so Luke came up with that so that we're is- hoping to do a couple of a uh, two week run um, so I, yeah. I'll, I'll make a point of coming to see you because that sounds fantastic. Um, Brilliant, that would be amazing. Thank you. Um, I've only, only sold one ticket, there you go. <laughs> well, there we are, there we are, definitely. Um, the, 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 the other thing as well that, that led me from Edinburgh was to go to other festivals. I go to yeah. Leicester every year now, I go to Brighton, I go to um, Hastings, is very good. Um, there's loads and loads of comedy fringe festivals throughout the year. And I love the fact that the comedians can use it as a um, a, a springboard to hopefully better things. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. I mean, there, there was so many fringes now, like I'm going yeah. up to Nottingham next week. Um, yeah. Uh, and well, it's, uh, well there, actually, it? by, yeah. the, by, the, by the time the podcast comes out, it won't be. Well, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be gone. So previous yeah. November, I went to. I went <laughs> to was fantastic. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not doing a show now. I'm just doing no. a, a roast battle there, uh, which will be quite fun. Uh, and then by Leicester, I'm taking a show there with. Oh, um, I will see you there then. Yeah. With, yeah, I'm taking it with Variety D, and Variety yeah. D's absolutely fantastic. Like bit on TV and things like that. Um, but yeah, me and Variety yeah. Crocker friends as well. Um, yeah. That's what's been nice about development and comedy is yeah. the amount of pros that are actually just really easy to talk to is because yeah, you think, yeah, oh yeah. my God, pros, they're going to just, they're going to look down on me. They don't, but actually the opposite. They're all, they're all human. And, yeah. and, and they're all on your level. Um, they know, uh, they, they've yeah. been there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I can't believe the people I've had on here. I've interviewed Al Murray. I've interviewed Barry Cryer. I've interviewed Joe Law, uh, Joe, Law, Joe Lysett. And I've interviewed Angela Barnes, to name a few. Um, tell me more. I'm intrigued. Tell me more about the laughable comedy night. 
um, because uh, I keep meaning to come along to this, and I haven't as yet, but I, I do want to make a point of coming along. Please so, tell me more about it. So Laugh Able started about two, three years ago now, and I set it up because I, I met a lot of other disabled comics who were saying to me, half the venues we go to are not accessible. We no. can't access them. The amount of ones are on stairs, especially in London as well, yeah. is, is is really bad. And so I was like, oh, okay, I'll just create a for I'll just create a venue. I'll try to get some axle on. It started off as a standard open mic, but then um I had actually my first show, I don't know how, but I managed to get Evan Simmons on the headlining. Uh, that was about three years ago at opening night, and that was absolutely fantastic. Um, and then lockdown happened. And so I was like, oh, my God, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. However, I started doing online shows. And the amount of disabled people that would come to the online shows because they were like, we, we can't go out because we're vulnerable. It was brilliant. And I managed to, I think, get Rosie Jones at one of my shows headlining. What a, what a I, it, it was incredible. I mean, I'm trying to like book her again now, but and she's not That's fantastic. She's not like, She's not wanting to not come because she does. She loves it. She loves laughing, yeah. but it's she's booked booked up solidly for six months. So it's just like well, I've had John Robertson on there. I've had Andrew and Neil like so. Mm -hmm. I've had some amazing uh, names on there. And we're doing our first all pro bill in two North Down. Oh, funnily enough, November. I know it goes out in June, but the first pro bill we're having on um, is we have Harriet Dyer headlining, which is Harriet Dyer. Again, phenomenal comic who's been a Russell Howard Tower. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I think yeah. comics appreciate that this because it's not just disability, it's mental health as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know that's basically my sexy talk so far. Um it's it's yeah, so I decided to create this forum where it's just like they don't a lot of acts go, Oh, do I have to talk about my disability? No, 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 you don't. It's just a forum for you there to go to an accessible venue, go to a venue where they know your needs and have a positive experience. And it's been a very positive experience. Post-lockdown, it's been quite hard to build the numbers up. Yeah. Uh, but that's a, what's happening with a lot of nights. Unless you're a comedy store, it's a real struggle for a lot of nights at the moment who who were just starting to establish themselves, such as my night. And then when the lockdown happened, post-lockdown, it's getting audience in especially a lot of my audience are disabled people going out again is still a bit of a risk and things like that yeah. so but well done you that is fantastic absolutely fantastic well done because um i as i say i keep meaning to do it and and i know we, we are recording this in november i will do my best to get along to two north down even even although i live in south london I will come to North London. <laughs> oh, that'd be amazing. That'd be fantastic. I would love that. And if there's one in November, do let me know because um, yeah, because we, we want one. It keeps cross, so we want one in Wanstead. Yeah. Wanstead. All right. Has more, has more open mic, but we'll have a pro headliner. The one in Two North Town is all pros. Actually, right. funny enough, we were talking about. I might, I might look at the Wanstead one as well. Yeah, because I've got Vic Melody on. And Vic Melody's just come back from an She's incredible. Just this. She's been brilliant. Absolutely wonderful yeah. act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very blessed with the acts that I have That's coming to me. And, nice. and, and also as well, to have, to to get the use of um, the online uh, comedy through the Laughable Comedy Nights, having it online was is brilliant because I was going to ask you, how did you find online gigs as opposed to live gigs? But of course, what a success story. It was, and, and actually, yeah. it's how I got my open spot at the comedy store because the King Gong was online, and it was a Zoom King Gong, and it was you couldn't see the audience, so it was a little bit easier in a way. <laughs> but I don't care. That's how I got the open spot at comedy store because because everyone go, oh, do you have to, you know, do do you get that booked in? Do you have to email them? I went, no, you have to do the King Gong. because oh. King Gong is <laughs> nobody likes these guys. No, I hate it. My first time I did King Kong, I lost 30 seconds the next time I won it. So you got to keep going back. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's your only way in a lot of the time. It's your only way in. It's just unfortunate, but Comedy Store, they have so many incredible acts yeah. on the bill. 
is so competitive to get a spot there. Mm-hmm. One of the ways they do it is through the gong show. So it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. necessary evil. That's how I refer to gong shows as, as necessary mm-hmm. evils. As I said, as I said earlier, I've spent half my life in London and I first came down on 1988. And the first time I went to the comedy store, the bill was um Richard Morton, Phil Jupiter's, Linda Smith, God rest her soul. Yeah. And um the, the top of the bill was a chap called Charles Fleischer, who was never heard of again. He was a very visual comic, but he went to make uh he, he played the voice of Roger Rabbit, went to voice Roger Rabbit, and the rest is history. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> who are your favorite comedians, past and present? Um, my favorite comedians, past and present, I would say. Uh, wow, that's that's very hard. One growing up, I always used to admire was Robin Williams. Oh, I thought just his energy on stage, his ability to work through impressions, yeah, uh, to think on his feet, to just just being constantly on the ball. Amazing, yeah. It, and so, like when I first performed at the comedy store in London, the one in London, when you walk down, there's a big portrait of. Robbie Williams and that's right. yeah. And and when you walk past him, but I've graced the same stage as that guy. And I spoke to the owner afterwards and he was saying, Yeah, I met Robin, he's lovely. And I was like, I just yeah, he's one of my idols. So Yeah, he was incredible. I mean, I mean, I wish I'd been in the comedy store the night he was playing. Exactly. Like, you know, because it was just an off the cuff as well. He just walked up and did 20 minutes. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, what, that's what Don was telling me. So incredible stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, like it was. So he, pre- like at the moment, there's other acts that I absolutely love. That are my, my favourites. Uh, Mark Simmons being one of them. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, Good Australia. Choices. Sorry? Good choices. Yeah, yeah. And another one who's got Netflix, a couple of Netflix specials, um, Australian comic. Um, Hannah Gadsby oh, uh, and, yeah uh, and the way she sort of talks about trauma on stage and talks yeah, about yeah. autism a bit I just feel I like comics that go dark and talk about taboo subjects but not like dark for the sake of going dark dark there's a point to it yeah. so they're the type of comics that I sort of like the most ones that delve into subjects that people mainly you might avoid but it's important to talk about. So, yeah. So oh, I'd say man. two on my list, well, two on my list, yeah, off the bat, Robin Williams, uh, Mark Simmons, Hannah Gadsby. Like, they're my that's, three. That's, that's the brilliant. Um, my, fa- my first ever show, the first thing I ever saw with the family was Les Dawson in 1970. Oh, wow. That must have been uh, cool. On holiday. And then a year later, I saw Tommy Cooper. And then it's um, Cooper. I, that's and I, it's amazing. And, and and I got the bug for it. And I wrote I've written this, you know, I've got an enormous spreadsheet where with every single act and every venue I've ever seen on. And um I saw the alternative comedy boom. I saw, I saw Rick Mail, Ben Elton, um Frank Skinner, French and Saunders. Don't got Rick Mayo as well, another one. It's always and I really don't mean to use your age here, but it's all these I I was born in 1990, right? And so a lot of these <laughs> I, 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 I was born like, in 1967. I'm 55. Yeah, so, I mean, lines. <laughs> yeah, do you know, yeah, well, yeah, that's what you, that's what you say now. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> and these these grey hairs I've got, they're all they're all look, they're all <laughs> La- laughter, laughter hairs. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. They're not, nothing else. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yeah, they no, like things. There's so many old school comics. I wish yeah. I had actually seen uh, yeah. on stage that Is I it, never got a chance to. Because my family brought me up on very yeah. old school comedy as well, like Blackadder yeah. and things yeah, like that. So really. Monty Python and yeah. so. There's yeah. a there's a there's a section in my blog called the ones that got away, which is about twenty. I think I've written twenty five of them. Top of the tree will mark them and wise. I would love to have seen them. That's yeah. that's the reason why the blog exists. I, they were just incredible. But all yeah. the newer comics, um, there's so many great ones. I love uh, Josh Widdicombe. I love Ramesh Ranganathan. Oh and, yeah, you know, all, all 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 these people I've watched starting off and. 
there's so many great ones. I love Kerry Godleyman. Um, I love I love Alexandra Haddo. Oh, I she's love, brilliant. Yeah, she's yeah. superb. Um, um, but 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 there are so so many great great comedians, and it's just such a love and a passion for it. That yeah. it, I mean, what's not to love, my friend? What is not to love? And you're part of that. So I know, that's you. that's what that's what feels amazing. And then when yeah, you're yeah, yeah. deals with like again my comedy store experience, so the yeah. MC was Laura Lex, who had just been on my oh. week a couple of weeks ago, and Super. and she was like, because because I was I came off and I knew I didn't do as well as I thought I'd done. So the main thing is to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. And she yeah. told me once that there was a promoter that had said to her, "Give up comedy," and. Next thing you know, she's on Mock the Way. So then she went, don't feel too disheartened if you don't feel yeah. you did as well or people yeah. don't think you did as well. Keep going because actually yeah. to case. get to the other side, you know, yeah. now she's getting calls left, right, centre from every sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. she's gone through, she was saying, like, she's gone through the hardships yeah. um, and come out the other side. So it can That's happen. Brilliant. There will be periods where you do go yeah. through a bit of a rough patch, but, you know... Start to get handled things like you to my it. friend. It's the key to it all. Um, I've so much enjoyed talking to you. Just just before we go, um, is there anything else you'd like to say where people can find you on social media? Have you got any podcasts or anything like that? Uh so Mark Nicholas Stand Up Comedian on Facebook, um, at Mark Nicholas Comic or at M Nicholas Comic on Twitter and on TikTok, I believe. Mark Nicholas 9690 on Instagram. I should have a more to say one, really. It should be easier. <laughs> um, and, and, yeah, it would be really easy. <laughs> but also, as well, like, uh, Laugh Able, search that, because I'm hoping to really expand that soon. And, yeah, yeah. that's all my socials. you find everything on there and things like that. And, yeah, that's well, it. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I, for one, am going to come and see you very, very soon. I'll come Thank and see you the comedy and uh, the comedy night, and I'll see you... Uh, live there very very soon i've so much enjoyed it and thanks for being a great guest and all the best to you thank you very much all you right. take care my friend all the best all right bye, bye. thank you